Welcome to WTDC 17 in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where I'm very pleased to be joining the studio today, Mr. Karol Okonski, who is Under Secretary of State for the Ministry of Digital Affairs for Poland. Mr. Okonski, thank you very much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about this conference, WTDC 17, the World Telecommunication Development Conference. Why is this a conference important to you? Well, basically, uh, I think what is what's worth mentioning is that the fact that the ITU as an organization is uh, is, uh, is an institution where we think that different countries, both the underdeveloped, the in the middle and the highly developed, can share the, the experiences, especially in the development sector. It's actually all about get, giving away all all the knowledge and all the experiences, also some funding from the countries to just you know we're already on the path and already succeeded to the ones who just need some support. And uh, we, we as Poland more or less, you know, also benefit from, from the, some of the, help, of the help with of the organization because we are more or less moving from the, uh, let's say, the underdeveloped to the highly developed country. Uh, and uh, knowing that uh, there is a framework where you can refer to, knowing that there is, uh, uh, there are some states who are willing to, um, uh, to include you in your projects and, uh, to uh, to make sure that uh, you 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 know don't make the same mistakes, but you can benefit from the best practices. Uh, so this is you know this is basically the core of this uh, of the ITU, and in this respect also the conference where it's like culmination of all the work that was done, like a summary of work that was done so far, and setting also the goals for the next next period. So from this respect, you know, a very important moment. Now. The theme for this conference is ICTs for SDGs. In what way are ICTs uh, being used to uh, attain sustainable development in your region? Yes, I think this is very important to to balance, you know, the the, the high growth and uh, and uh, the innovation with the fact that it should have, you know, some clear goal of not leaving behind some of the people who might not be so digital digitally. Uh, um, um, well, they would have the skills necessary to, to catch up with all the digitalization um, uh, notion. So well, what, we, what we do in Poland also, we try to um, even, well, we, we have called even our cross-country cross strategy the um, sustainable development strategy because we know that uh, um, the... It's, the, the that the society in Poland is not equal in the way that uh, there are some still places or people who don't feel really at, uh, at ease with the new technologies and uh, all the ICT that can, can, can give them. And in this respect, uh, uh, we try to find ways to make the ICT as simple and as straightforward as, as possible to become sort of like a natural way for them. One of the examples I can give is that a very successful cooperation with banks in Poland, uh, we agreed with the banks that we, people can use their banking, online banking credentials to log into the public portals, public public sites, for example, to apply for the social welfare uh, benefits. So in that way, uh, you know, we, we try to get over some limits or borders that the people might encounter when, when trying to, to use ICT. I mean, a number of years ago, I did, uh, I mean, about 20 years probably, I did a piece uh, on uh, Euronews about uh, the, basically the infrastructure, telephony, uh, mobile telephony actually, being able to uh, help people to get, uh, communicate, communicate a lot, a lot sooner than, than before. I mean, there, there used to be 26-year uh, waiting lists for a telephone yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. I obviously, things, a lot of things have changed since then. But I wanted to ask you really just in terms of the, the adoption of ICTs, how is that going in Poland? Well, I think the, the, the adoption rate is, is, you know, getting, with each year it's getting higher and higher. And we see that uh, um, it's, let's say, on both, I would say both, um, I would say two, two sides of this. First of all is, let's say, like I said before, let's uh, make sure that there are no barriers or limits or something that actually would people, would make people, um, which, which gen generally are, are lacking time to make them actually do some additional work that they don't think is really necessary. At the same time, uh, the education in the way that um, the people know what they can get from ICT, but know both the potential risks, so they use it just wisely. And uh, the last thing I would add is that um, 
what we try to do is try to let's say um, convince the people that there are really some valuable, for example, electronic services that can really make their life much easier. And in the end, you know, just making them li just live better. So try to have the positive language about this, and not trying like to force them and, and feeling just unsafe with this. And in terms of uh, policy and regulatory changes, what would you like to uh, see? Uh, and what do you think is needed in order to connect the next billion, I mean, in terms of a global perspective? Well, I think here the, um, well, what, I think here we, what we just do, should do is just continue the, 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 the activities that were done by the, or are, are, are um, performed by ITU so far. So in terms of the standardization, especially for with the, uh, before the moment that we that will be approaching of adopting the 5G technology for the wireless communication. Definitely here the role of uh, ITU as the entity to coordinate the efforts to make sure that there will be no um, isolated standards coming up because of the new technologies to making sure that it's uh, you know, streamlined in the right direction. And, um, Sharing also some, some, again, some best practices or some um, proof of concept, some point of views that might be, you know, that might also speed up then the work that, was, that will be done in the countries that are just, you know, going in the next wave, I would say, after the leaders. Oh, this is three years since the last uh, telecommunication development conference. What do you hope will come from this conference? What concrete steps do you think will be achieved? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that what, what all, all, most of the countries are hoping is that uh, the regional initiatives that every continent, every region just come up, uh, have, has come up here to, uh, to propose. Uh, actually, they form kind of uh, goals that are the, the, the most important things that given each region thinks should do in, in the next period of time. In terms of Europe, for example, it was the, um, the idea of, of hope, trying to build and and, and supporting the building of the citizen, like citizen-centric services, or the, the, the 5G already mentioned. So I think that uh, confirming by this uh, conference that uh, the whole the whole world has the same, uh, well, the same opinion, and in the end, finishing this conference with the notion that uh, you know, despite all the differences between us, we can still come up with a, with a s simple and, uh, and and common message would be, I think, a very important step. So, you know, that would might also allow us to more, look more optimistic into the future. Well, with an optimistic eye for the future, thank you very much for joining us in the studio today, and we wish you the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.